preparing. We're streaming live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Asha. Happy Monday morning. Yeah. Happy Good morning. Monday. Welcome to Good another. morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Asha. About that. Pops up automatically and replays over the top. <laughs> So this morning we're talking everything trust, what trust means to us, our own personal journeys regarding trust, um, trust in self, what it is to have trusting relationships with others, and then also hopefully how it feeds into, um, you know, our, our careers as well and, and the importance of, of trust in, in um, developing, whether it be a tribe or um, groups that are, uh, that you feel really confident in, even when, when you're not present as well. So, so all things trust this morning. All things trust. All things trust. So I'll hand over to you first, Nicolette. What does, first of all, what, what comes up for you when you think the word trust? So when I, when I think of the word trust, I think of surrender. Mm. Um, surrendering to what is trusting in the greater plan um trusting in what's going on in our lives even when it feels like it's all going badly <laughs> um yeah so trust for me is like is the the test um Yeah. yeah, yeah, a big one. It is a big one. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I really, I really love that concept of trust being the test because for me, with with trust, and when you say that, I get the inclination to lean in, you know, and and I think when when we do have life experiences that disrupt us or that we feel perhaps uncomfortable with. That, that tendency of going, this is a test and, and to lean in, in knowing that this is also where the fruits of the labour are. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's not always like that, you know, in, and particularly early on. For me, um, <clears throat> that trust in the process, the, um, that it, it's, um, it becomes kind of a learned skill to be able to lean in, even when things don't feel comfortable or don't feel easy. When do you think is the first time you first really caught yourself being like, okay, this, this is a test and I'm going to do it anyway? Uh, I think what, what comes up for me when you say that is when I um, was separating from my husband and uh, everything in my training tra or my um, uh, learned value set was telling me it was making me uncomfortable like this is not like telling me that this isn't the right path or and you know all of the obstacles um, anyone who's been through divorce knows that it's, <laughs> it's a long road um, but knowing that in trusting in my heart that we were doing the right thing for myself and for him and for the children. Um, so that's probably my biggest example in my life to date of um, really having to trust the process and the greater plan and the, um, the decision. Because mm -hmm. when you make a decision, what follows isn't always easy or probably rarely easy actually. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I really agree. And what really captured me about what you said then is the idea of that inner knowingness, which is where one of the things um, <clears throat> that we that we mentioned was this idea of self trust and how you actually access that. Um, because I've certainly worked with a lot of people that the idea of their life being up to them terrifies them mm. you know and and 
and and I think we can all relate to that at, at some level and going um you know often often if people have always felt really driven to always have their their life firmly in their hands it actually comes from a place of mistrust of others because if you have always felt that way you know from from a developmental perspective we're often um looking at some some kind of relationship dynamic where you've gone I don't feel safe to get my needs met or to be seen fully or to be valued so I'm going to give myself no other option but to have my hands on the wheels and those people can often be incredibly successful and they often lead quite isolated lives because they've been so intent on holding so um tightly the the wheel that the idea of kind of going oh is there a time that I can even um have a co-pilot is terrifying for them so so most people Mm. whether you're whether you you're really firm on having your hands on the wheel or whether you're like nah somebody else take the wheel it comes down to the same idea of trust and where that that trust is placed um and and at what level do we either feel empowered or terrified to hand someone else the wheel and to also hold it um, ourselves, but not necessarily in a way where we're white knuckling it, in a way that we're actually relaxed at the wheel? Mm. So I'm just interested um, in yeah in in posing this um subject we also put the quote um what you are shout so loudly in my ears I can't hear what you say and and what also came up for me in reflecting on on this um topic of trust is you can't fool your own nature You know, so people can be also very, very good at lip service or um, saying, yes, I'm going to do that. But that inner voice that then um, says, you are not, you're you're never going to go skydiving or you're never, you know, so being able to, to also have that insight of going, what is my nature? And then, um, where where do I actually really come into contact with that so I can work purposefully with it rather than be governed by it in a way that holds me back or be so um, gung-ho essentially that I'm forever falling over my own feet. Mm. What comes up for me when you, um, and we've spoken about, uh, you and I prior to the call have spoken about congruency and uh people people being able to sense when you're out of alignment Mm -hmm. and therefore not trusting you because they sense that there's something not quite right about your energy um and this came up when i was talking about the um the decision making for me and the, the divorce and that process is that i in my um in my training um, from my mother and from society, I suppose, I default to being a pleaser and and feel comfortable in myself when when I have made everyone else around me comfortable. So because I have a tendency to do that, I do think I, I, my actions are to please everyone around me. And internally, that's not congruent with what I'm actually wanting in the moment. <laughs> so so um and that's that's actually not sustainable either which leads to me being um um what's the word uh, not consistent so i'll please and please and please and please and please and then be like screw all of you <laughs> yeah, <I'm yeah>. done. <laughs> which is not actually what i'm what i'm wanting to achieve either and the whole time the people around me are like oh i don't think she really wants to do this but okay we'll let her go because she's a force to be reckoned with when she wants something you know done <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah it's um well what came up for me when when you were talking about that was was some really like 
key embedded ideas about relationships. So one, what, what kind of role do we, we feel the need to fulfill? Um, two, like you're saying, is it really in alignment? But three, what, what I heard go along with that is this idea of reciprocity. Because when, um, when we're often givers, we're very happy to give until we reach that threshold. And, and there is an underlying belief that, well, if I've given, surely I'll get some back at some point. And so then for, for when the givers are giving and giving and giving and they're getting exasperated in their giving and there's still nothing back, um, it's like, well, <laughs> now, now I'm going to throw the baby out with bathwater, you can all go stuff yourself, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and the pendulum kind of swings. So yeah. I think what you also said in terms of giving myself to actually be present to what's in alignment in the moment rather than, and, and kind of catching ourselves on our default mode, you know, um, you know and, and I would be very much the same, you know, I, whether, you know, some conditioned responses in, in giving or hosting or just in also natural disposition to be, to be nurturers. Yes, there's a lot of um, giving. And for me, it was a learned skill to then actually open up the reflectors within to allow some back. Because one of um, mm. the, the most pivotal messages I was given, and it was while I was going through my um, supervision training, was by one of my, my mentors. And he said, Asha, you treat, uh, you teach people how to treat you. Mm -hmm. And what was really interesting for me at that time is all of my conditioning had led to me to be very polite, very effectual. Um, you know, I took my training really seriously. So, so when, when, there was feedback to go like, oh, okay, like um, I might have just pressed someone's buttons there. I really had to reflect on, well, one, what, what, what is a my thing versus what's a their thing? And, and if I am um, teaching people how to treat me, that where, if you're naturally nurturing and giving, if you have that underlying subconscious bias of reciprocity that I have well, I've taught you how to treat me by leading by example, but then we get some kind of feedback that's not in the same way. It's an entirely different skill set to then teach people how to treat you then when they haven't treated you with perhaps um, kindness or respect or decency or whatever. And, and that, that, that takes our own self-trust to a whole new level. And also then to add on that, um, not letting that those experiences insidiously shape how you view others. Because if you lead by example, and then other people um, in some way overstep a boundary or, um, you know, just feel entitled in, in some kind of way, um, holding space for the fact that, that that person is operating within their own sphere and it doesn't necessarily mean something about me or insidiously something about how others will treat you in the future so so mm. then taking ownership of our own learning and going well right one I've just come into contact with this experience that kind of um butted up against those subconscious beliefs around um one, how I'm supposed to engage, two, how others are supposed to engage, and three, this idea of reciprocity that I do something, you know, I'm, I'm kind and polite to you, you be kind and polite back, you know, so, mm -hmm. so when, when one of those three things have been triggered for, for whatever reason, holding space for the fact that, well, one, there may not actually be anything necessarily wrong with with what I've done or who I am as a person or or whatever it is and it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong with that person either you know so so what's yeah. happening within the dynamic that um is is creating 
something other than what we would have anticipated and actually just holding space for that long enough until you feel centered and you feel like you can engage as who you truly are not in a reactive way not in an entitled way not in a reciprocity way as in well you've done something to to slight me now I'm going to misbehave back so making sure that we're we're truly in our center and choosing how to engage and navigate whatever's just come up because I choose to look at it as though that is a gift for my learning but I didn't always, like that's been a process, but that's a gift for my learning in going, ah, someone's just presented in a way that I didn't expect. Now, how do I choose to relate? Yeah. For me, the, the most difficult um, discomfort to sit in is conflict or um, and having to verbally speak my truth instead of um drop hints <laughs> uh it gets it gets stuck and i get very um um i have to remind myself to trust in in my own boundary and my own um needs and that they are just as important as the other person's um and that the that the conversation that needs to be had is actually far more important than being a pleaser, um, making everything sort of go smoothly, because what, what ensues from that is deeper connection and deeper trust. If, if you have the guts to speak up when you need to, um, but it's not, it's not something that I feel comes natural. Well, I don't feel it comes naturally to anyone really. Some people are better at it than others, but um, yeah. So there's two parts of that 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 the trust get, comes up in mm. trust in yourself and your own um, nudges, internal nudges that okay, this needs to be aired and spoken about, and trust in that that after this bump, everything everything is going to actually be be better and deeper and more congruent and. Um, yeah, so that's what comes up for me in that discussion. I love that. Um, and mm -hmm. because I, I really hear, and you're one, one of the, the modes that I see you live your life by is by your intention setting. And, and you know how powerful your intentions are. And so the intention that I hear that allows you to carry out that process is my intention is to have the deepest, strongest relationships that I can. Mm. and that's and actually more important than avoiding the discomfort in in the moment of of making that making that happen yeah beautiful mm. yeah exactly and and I you know I I see you do that and, and one of the things that um that that kind of brings us more onto that legacy thing is how you have built your tribe and network in a way that that has honored that and so then when you're not there, it flourishes mm. as well. Would, would you mind speaking into that a little bit? Uh, yeah, okay. So um, my intention for my work as a healer and, and as an artist has always been to uh, create community and create a safe space for people to um, meet other like-minded people who might be interested in meditation or art therapy or whatever it is that um, that I'm bringing them to in the moment um, and how that plays out in events and retreats and and um, is bringing people together in a space whether it be a physical space or an online space and holding that really firm intention and belief that it's going to be a beautiful experience regardless of what happens you know no matter if um one of my singing bowls gets knocked over on the first day and smashed that's never happened touch wood but um <laughs> um knowing that everything happens for a reason in in those um circumstances and that all of the people who have been pr brought together are there to um to 
deepen their connection with themselves. So even when people trigger each other, I know with that overriding intention and I trust that that is happening for the highest good of them, but also the whole group to, to reflect. Um, so speaking to what your question was originally, um, then when people leave my space, they take that belief system with them. So that the number one, the, um, the understanding of the power of their own intention and, and trusting, trusting in the process, trusting in their own journey, because, you know, quite often when people start healing work or they start working on themselves and it gets ugly and uncomfortable and all of these things are coming up, the, the, the tendency is to push it down um, instead of trusting the process and allowing that all and trusting the people around you that, that they, um, the right people will be there to hold space for you when you need it in that process. So I hope that answers your question, but that's what came up. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it absolutely does. And um, I, as, as you're speaking, I was, you know, reflecting on, you know, being in your healing space and, and attending some of your events and, you know, some of the things that we've done together and that that intention that you set is actually palpable within the room. You can feel it. You can feel that overarching intention of um, the the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And, you know, I've certainly been to many workshops or personal development events where people are so in themselves that, that there's not a real, it, it's not really a shared space. And for me and experiencing what you do and how you set that up and, um, yeah, through that intention, which comes out in everything that you are and that you do and facilitate, it's so palpable that it changes the air of the room, you know. And so I, I really just want to credit that. Um, Thank you. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, and, yeah, and then, and then what naturally flows from that um, is is a remarkable shared process. So so I think that that really speaks to the heart of of everything that we're covering. One, the trust in self, because you know that if you actually hold space and commit to it, the the wave inevitably comes out the other side. Yeah. So and 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 we just hold space until that is eventualized or um, actualized, yeah. and then. Two, in it's in it's in your certainty and intention that others go, okay, we're we're okay here, and then they witness it and observe it and feel it for themselves. And like you said, that's what also enables them to to leave the space changed, because that that level of experience and shared experience. Because things are always multiplied when they're shared because it's not just this um, individualized concept of, well, am I a little bit crazy? Did that really happen? You know, when, when things are shared and witnessed together, um, particularly in the energy space. I've heard Nicolette talk about this, but is she actually yeah. crazy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't see it. So how do I really know? How do I really trust in it? Um, it's, it's the fact that we make sense of our experiences and ourselves also through other people, which for me, um, that, that's part of the beauty of finding your tribe and, and, and bringing your tribe in, in that when you have your profound experiences that shift you, it's reflected back in a safe way. Because if you're surrounded by people where you've had an experience that shifts you and you're still processing and people reflect back to you, oh, I don't know about that, there will be an unsettling within and and then you've kind of got to work you know even the 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 length of the race has just doubled in going not only do I have to process this for me I've now got to process it in a way for others that make sense and and they also feel um you know like oh they haven't you know like like things aren't unstable um yeah so so all of this boils back down to trust and and coming back to to this idea of tapping into trust in self in recognizing the more you trust in self, you, you then allow for the trust 
in others. And that doesn't necessarily come easy for people who have, who have been very successful in some kind of way, or like I said at the very beginning, learn that they have to hold things too tightly. And, and it all comes back to, to trust in self. Because if you trust and inherently know that I am okay irrespective, that's where the trust then becomes easy because I don't need this other person to be anything other than they are in order for me to be okay. And I just got the visual when you were talking, trust, trusting in self and also trusting in the, the strength of that big intention. So it's like this, um, this elastic band of, of energy pull mm. that your, your big intentions will always will always come to fruition um, regardless of what happens along the way and if there's zigzags and and all of those things um, so that would be my probably my biggest message for today is trust in yourself and trust in your big intentions and know that that there's there's no way that it it can't play out because everything in your and you have all of the technical scientific words for this but everything in your receptors in you will lead you to that place yes 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 and you can you can now use the big words <laughs> the reticular activating system That's yeah it. the res <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> Um, yeah, so essentially that's the process of, and, and we kind of hinted at it last um, chat, which was allowing yourself to envision that, that outcome that you want so much and it's held with so much intention that your nervous system gets trained to have a uh, tunnel focused on it. So, so if, um, for example, you want to buy a new car you will start seeing everyone else that has that car because the the RAS has learned this is important to me pay attention and you'll naturally clock it so so when something gets in your nervous system and you've now got tunnel focus the subconscious mind actually takes over and you naturally head and it's almost like you're pulled in that direction of it becoming an actuality because the nervous system goes, this is really important to me um, and, and essentially I won't stop until it's actualized. Even mm. when the, those road bumps come up and it's not um, in, a, in a way that I need to be worried in that other things lose perspective, it's when we've done the deep dive to go, well, what's most important to me? This is so in alignment with who I truly am that I give permission for things to unfold the only way that they can mm. to allow this to come to fruition. So, and, and it's really it's funny. Win. Exactly. What a story thing, when you think. Okay, cool. The very first thing that you said today was around surrender. Mm. You know, so, and, and I find that things always come full circle in, um, in the, in the concept of trust is about surrendering because when, when I know that I have done the inner work to purposefully set my intentions, to make sure my goals are in alignment, to give myself permission to become whatever version of myself is needed to actualize that, and then to also let go of whatever is not serving me or um, moving towards that, then, then the nature of who we are, which brings us back to that quote, the nature of who we are speaks so loudly that, that the actual words become um, less important. Mm. So, so it's when, so the overarching thing for this, for me, is one, to understand yourself so clearly that the nature of who you are does the speaking for you but then also to speak with intention, to act with intention and to have our focus on what's deeply important to me as a person, as how I relate with others and how I either build a tribe or a legacy um, in, in going, my intentions are so firm that when my day is done, 
I know that I've honoured the nature of who I am, my relationships with others, and it's now witnessed in what I have left. And that, for me, is that centering point where I go, I can simply trust. You said to me when we spoke about this before, how will you know when you're on your deathbed, how will you know that your legacy is being carried out or that you've achieved what you wanted on on this planet? And I said that all the people who are around my deathbed are very connected with each other and they all love each other and they all support each other and I can see that and feel that. I can feel it now. Hmm. And <laughs> yeah, and in being someone who's privileged enough to be brought into your world, I certainly witness that living in action. Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to take um, a couple more minutes to tell a story about um, a personal experience of setting my setting my big intention. Um, and how it didn't go according to plan and understanding later what my big intention actually was. So um, I, know, and I, know, I know my cousin won't mind me telling this story, but um, a few years ago, uh, my cousin was struggling with IVF and needed an egg donor. And um, I put my hand up um, to donate my eggs for the process and it, it was the same year that we lost uh, one of my other cousins to suicide. So the family was in um, a lot of pain. And um, anyway, so we, we went into the, I, I went into the IVF cycle process with, I was meditating every day. I was tuning into my guide at the time, which um, is my grandmother on my dad's side. I still talk to her regularly in my head. <laughs> um, and and I truly believed that she was on board with with what we wanted to create in in the family and for for my cousin and her husband and that that I was doing the right thing and all of those and I had this really firm intention I, I ate well I stopped drinking like all of the things and when my eggs were collected and they they both succumbed and and the process failed i went into a state of hang on a minute i know how to i know how to manifest what i want i know how to create what i want why did this not work for us i had such firm belief i could see the child like it was it was a big process and i realized later on that my intention was to forge the family together and that that intention carried through even when the, the the goal that I had set what I thought that that I wanted that we wanted didn't happen the bond I now have with her and her husband um, is is something that can only be created through that type of experience and hardship so I wanted to tell that story because even even when you feel like your intention is so strong and you know what you want and then it falls flat there's a bigger there's a bigger power at play and there's a bigger intention that you have that is still coming to fruition yeah. so trust in that yes yeah yeah and and what you're building along the way you know who you become through that what what they witness within you because people always learn what's also possible through other people as well you know so so seeing the power of your intention and how deeply you care and how and what a powerhouse you are it also gives other people permission to to do the same and yeah exactly like you said there's it may not be the path that that we anticipated but we inevitably end up at the same place, mm. you know, which, which, which honours the intention of, of the nature of who we are. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, well, that was a big one. We knew that trust was going to be a big one. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and we'll be here the same 
Um, the same time next week. We haven't chosen a topic yet, but we will tune into that during the week and um, and announce it. <laughs> um, and and we're also working on some big projects together this year. Some mm -hmm. workshops, some events, some retreats, and uh, super excited to be working in this space with you, Asha. I yeah, think that too. we uh, <laughs> complement each other beautifully in our skill sets and um, in holding space for people who are evolving. So yes. very exciting times. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, lovelies. Thanks, everyone. Bye.